Hello, everyone. Nice to see many of you here. Um, I will share a bit about what is Aldo Design Factory and, and what do we do there. Uh, when, um, when we're talking about um, uh, learning something or teaching something, teaching a class, executing research, working on a project, uh, disseminating knowledge technology, these are all sort of things that we do in, in university environment. What we have thought of is uh, to, to sort of redesign the environment in a way uh, where we look at the context. The context is everything. Um, and, and if we look at in, in futures, uh, there's a lot of ambiguity in terms of technology, in terms of where we go with education, in terms of a lot of different things. Um, and in a way, dancing with, with ambiguity is, is a fun exercise to do, and we've done quite a lot of it. This is perhaps a bit of my personal history of, of dancing with ambiguity. Uh, well, I think we can relate um, to what is happening in, in the working world at the moment. Yes, we have, there's a lot of, if, if you look at sort of childhood, there's a lot of play, there's a lot of doing hands-on stuff, there's a lot of uh, actually physically per performing something. But as we age and go through formal education and end up in our sort of daily jobs, the more and more it's something like this, working on a computer, uh, doing something which doesn't feel that real as, uh, as doing physical things. Um, What's happening uh, around us uh, is the evolution, sort of uh, the technological development or, or the, the rate of technological de development is uh, increasingly fast or it, it's, it's the, the progress curve is exponential. Uh, if you look at whatever technology, it's ever increasing speed that we are experiencing. Uh, the, the context in which we uh, work and, and learn and educate is, is uh, becoming more complex. Uh, uh, and that makes a, a, a sort of interesting um, things uh, in terms of education. We, if, we, if we look at future professions, the highly sort of hypothetical, um, which might be reality in, in a, let's say, 10 to 20 years. I don't know, uh, privacy guard. We're talking a lot about privacy, online environments, about copyrights, uh, social media addiction therapist, maybe. Um, but then, okay, if we look at what is needed in the future, and what, how are we teaching our um, sort of younger generations at the moment? Um, this is from, I think, 13th century um, university lecture room or church in, in, in that case might be. Um, and if you look at today's lecture rooms, it, it, it doesn't differ a lot. What has changed is that, yes, we have PowerPoints and we have projectors, but the way in which we learn and teach is, is fairly similar. Um, and the, the problem that we've been pondering is that, yes, experts of tomorrow are trained today by experts who were trained <coughs> yesterday, which is a bit of a dilemma. Um, what we have developed uh, in, in Aalto is, is, a, is a design factory, which is, if you put it into a complex sentence, an experimental, passion-based co-creation platform for education. Uh, but what it means in practice? Uh, well, we have design factories currently in, in 11 different locations in five continents, which are working in similar ways. We're trying to prototype new ways in learning uh, which is in the context of product development, product design. Um, what we do in practice is we organize courses, seminars, workshops, experiments in, in a 
very, if you look at the list, it looks exactly the same as, as every university offering. Um, but there are specific things that we design into the sort of environment and into our, our courses. Planned coincidences, organized serendipity, um, which I'll get to in a moment. Uh, the, the physical space of Design Factor is, is a constantly changing sort of physical, social, mental environment. Uh, it's never finished. Design is never finished. Uh, um, it aims at supporting interdisciplinary, international cooperation. So in our student teams, we have usually so that we have one local team and one distant team which work together on a common project. Um, we bring uh, people together from different backgrounds, expertise, knowledge, experience, and then we prototype. We do hands-on things. Um, encourage curiosity, exploration, and sort of what's in the background called is, is the sort of pedagogy development for, for future in university education. What is common to all these manufacturers is that students come number one. That is the major change, I think, in, in, in uh, thinking uh, about university education. It's not about some expert sharing the knowledge to everyone. The people in the, in the audience or participating in the experience, they are the most important people. And everything is, around, is designed around them. The, the student is our user. What we uh, teach or coach uh, um, um, with students is what PBL, pro problem-based learning or project-based learning, also passion-based learning, uh, pain-based learning, um, uh, design thinking, which is a sort of process-centric view of developing products, um, very heavily practice around it, and, and all of our sort of spaces, equipment, and personals are easily accessible, which m might not be the case in, in sort of normal university setting. Uh, so you can see their professors, which are, which are there at 8 o'clock, because they want to be there because they want to help the student teams. Um, and it's all about sharing ideas, sharing the love. Um, design thinking process, roughly what it look like, looks like in theory, uh, that you start from a problem or de defining your problem. You go into, okay, what's available in uh, all around us. You go to, to interview, observe uh, users, uh, you come up with, with uh, multiple different types of uh, answers how to actually um, uh, solve a problem. You prototype, then you test with the real users. What it looks like in reality is something like this. Yes, it is a, a process in which it, it has its sort of process logics, but you need to be able to a bit move around a bit, let's say. And um, we go this process over and over with student teams until they learn it until they sort of are um, uh, sort of comfortable in actually going out of the, the classroom or, or learning environment, interacting with real users, developing products in the real sort of context that, that they are being used in. Uh, it is always about people. It's about interaction with people. It's about... Um, sort of being on the same level. It's about empathy. Very crucial point in, in, in the sort of developing anything. Um, it's about tangible communication. We prototype everything. We build very simple models that can be shared and tested. Um, you can actually um, prototype to think instead of think about prototyping. You can sort of expand your thinking in a way that, okay, I'll build something and see what it comes out as, uh, instead of, okay, I design it first and then I prototype it. Um, and the goal is, is, of course, in a way, accelerated learning. So um, what, what we, uh, we push the student teams a lot, let's say, uh, um, that the solutions or the, the ideas that they have um, they should make a real effort in, in uh, a bit of producing them. What, what is a sort of 
result of that push is that we get from sort of obvious solutions to, to the to sort of real creative solutions. If we push them really hard forward, they might get to the sort of absurd <laughs> solutions, which in some cases makes sense. Um, in others, it, it might be okay to, to stay on the, the sort of uh, uh, reasonable sort of um, scale of, of difficulty of impl implementation and the value of it. Um, so if we look at sort of what do we actually do, uh, we, instead of learning theory, we experience the theory in practice with the design process. We don't have any homework. We practice with a real project, real projects that, that come from companies or organizations uh, and, and demonstrate our learning with, with the results, tangible prototypes. Um, but in addition to sort of redesigning the way we, we teach, we have redesigned the, the interaction points and the, the sort of uh, smaller things that we do on a daily basis. Um, and we have named them in, in different ways. One example is, is a small group meeting. Uh, we try to avoid the sort of lecture setting where people are standing in, in and listening something. Um, and small group meetings are, are one way of sort of leveling the ground. There are no sort of experts. You are discussing in a small group about the things that you're doing and then sort of challenging each other what you're actually doing, how to take it forward. Um, another experiment, so slightly unorganized design session, where we do something that might be completely out of the context of the project that we're working on. It's just to have fun. Uh, some famous people, I don't know which uh, is this quote from, said that if we can laugh together, we can work together. And I think that's very true. It's, it's not only about sort of working on a, on a, on a sort of serious topic together. If, if we can have fun while doing it, it's a lot more sort of enjoyable process. Um, this is where I end my examples for now. I think um, we'll talk about those in a moment in the discussion. Thank you.